The Night Lords, Gory Astronomicon. How is it put into place and why? Why is it similar to what the Emperor does with his shining beacon? Who does it lure into the Night Lords trap? Friends, let's find out and welcome to another 40k video. Drawing from the Night Lords trilogy by Aaron Dembski Bowden, in particular the last one. They numbered 138 in total and Talos speaks to them. Talos is the leader of this band of Night Lords. He says, I hold the Imperium's founding ideal that the species must know peace through obedience. I aim to bring the Imperium back into those skies. He asks those gathered before him, all psychers, what they know of the warp. One says it's where those who are disloyal to the Emperor go. Talos kills one of them and says, commune with your power in whatever way works best. Reach out now and feel for the soul of your dead leader. All who can hear her spirit, still shrieking in the air around us, step forward. Many do. And then he reveals to them the truth of the warp. The warp is nothing so mundane. Beneath what we see of the universe is a layer we do not. Through this unseen sea of souls, an infinity of demons swim. They are even now digesting the spirit of your murdered kin. The warp is not sentient, neither is it malicious, it simply is, and it responds to human emotion and suffering, and in such moments humanity is at its strongest and most honest. Suffering colours the warp, and the suffering of psychic souls is like a beacon. Your emperor uses that suffering as fuel for his golden throne, to project the Astronomicon. He says the suffering of those here will make a beacon of his own. The people of the city will feel pain, and he knows the psychers can already feel it. He says, let it saturate you. Listen, listen to the screaming of souls, as they dissolve from this realm into the next. Let their torment ripen within you, carry it with you as an honour, for together you will become an instrument no different from your beloved distant emperor. You, like he, will become beacons in the endless night, bred from agony. With the pain I give you, with your prolonged agonies, I will choke the warp at the Imperium's edge. Mankind's emperor will ignore Sagawalsa no longer and will learn an old lesson. It is not enough to force criminals and sinners into exile. You must make an example of them. Leniency is weakness. Later in the tale, we are told that the husks laid out on each table scarcely resembled humans in any real sense. One was a mess of musculature and stripped veins, twitching its final moments away on the surgery table. The flayed ones were a little better. Neither were those now deprived of their tongues, lips, hands and noses. Ruination was complete on each and every one of them. Desecration had never seen such variety. The Night Lord Navigator was walking through a living monument to fear and pain. This was the Legion's imagination given form. The screaming gallery. Was it like this? She asked the Night Lord, who nodded. Very much so. Now do it, he commanded. Telus' command was heeded. Octavia took a stale breath, moved to the closest table and removed her bandana. I'll lend it for you, she whispered to the organic wreckage that had once been a man. It turned its eyes towards her with the last of its strength, lifted its wet gaze to the navigator's third eye, and looked into absolute oblivion, and as she repeated this, the message went out, the Astra Telepathica Duct. Sixteen minutes after its contingent of psychically gifted souls received the mortis cry from several worlds elsewhere along the duct. The Astra te Telepathic Relay at Orvalas Station went dark, no trace of its further existence was ever noted in an Imperial record. All 540 souls aboard were entered into the Adeptus Astra Telepathicus Chronicles of the Lost at the headquarter base bastion on the World Heras, Crocius Subsector. In Ultima Segmentum, the final astropathic transmission from Orvalas reached 34 other worlds, strengthening the bleak song. Past its already potent voice, it took four hours. Now seeing the damage this event does on the larger scale, how it reaches out, 
the parts of the Imperium, let's return to the Navigator. One by one, Octavia killed them with her secret sight. Each of them looked into her hidden eye, and though she never knew what they saw, she knew what would happen. By the twelfth, she was drooling herself, trembling, bleeding from her third eye. By the fifteenth, she could barely stand. By the eighteenth, she could no longer recall who she was. She passed out as she murdered the last. First Claw gathered later around the command throne of Telos, who explains what he has done to them. Each astrotelepathic duct is as unique a thing as a, as a fingerprint. One might be created by artifice and intent, several worlds being colonised in alignment near stable warp transit routes, allowing the psychic dreamers on each planet to speak across the untold distance. Others are born of chance and happenstance, boosted by the warp itself or by a simple twist of fate that allows a number of disparate worlds the chance to call each other across the solar winds. The Imperium has hundreds of these ducts, tell us we're smiling now. They grow, they fade, they rise and degrade, always in flux, with few other ways to make Ashtapathy even an iota more reliable. There is little other choice, and still, it is an art of casting runestones and heeding whispers from nowhere. Utilising a duct is no stroke of genius, but this one, what we did here, brothers, the prophet sheathed his sword. The idea came to me when Delchion first constructed the Shriek. His craft was to turn fear and pain into a source of power. It made fear into a weapon once more. Terror became a means to an end, rather than the end itself. Talos met their eyes. So this brings them to Sagulsa. Talos said, his voice softer now, our refuge and second home. He speaks of the people of the planet, lost alone, prey. What better weapon to wield against the Imperium than the souls of its lost own children? Talos walked around the chamber, addressing the mortal crew, meeting the eyes in turn. All this power and pain at our fingertips. Weapons that can level cities, a warship capable of breaking entire fleet blockades. But that means nothing in the long war. We can leave scars on steel, but so can any ragged pirate vessel with a battery of macro cannons. We are the 8th Legion. We are the Night Lords. We wound flesh, steel and soul alike. We scar memories. We scar minds. Our actions must mean something, or we deserve to be forgotten, left to rot, amongst ancient mythology. Talos took a breath, his voice growing soft again. So I give voice to the song. The song means something, a truer weapon than any laser battery or bombardment cannon. But how best to twist this silent song into a blade that might bleed the Imperium. He says the pain they inflicted was drunk on by the astropaths, and when they expired, it was as husks bloated by genocidal suffering. We bring them agony and fear night after night. They scream it out as psychic pain. They screamed it out upon the moment of death, right here into the astropathic duct. World after world is hearing it, even now. The astropaths on those worlds magnify it with their own miseries, adding verses and choruses to the song, sharing it with the other worlds in line. Talos paused, the final moment of his speech coming. The smile finally faded, his eyes slid from all others, now reflecting the bluish gleam of the hololithic. All of this was possible because of one final gamble, one last way to make the song louder than we could ever have imagined. From what he has done, it calls out, but it is not the Imperium that answers in this tale, but the Eldar, and a particular one, the Phoenix Lord, Jane Zar, who Talos reaps a price from before she kills him. Before she does that, Zar tastes the grenades he has slyly hidden from her sight, and she is blown into parts with his last act. So on that grisly note, we wrap up today's video. If you can, find a copy of the Night Lords trilogy. It's excellent. I think it's one of my favourite 40k trilogies, and I love reading it. Finished the book yesterday. I feel like a video to some moment in it would be a good tribute to those great novels. So I chose what you've just listened to. Have you read the trilogy? Do you root for Talos and his companions like I did? The wonderful dark and like we get from those characters? 
or did you just like this grizzly law video? Comment down below.